Hello and welcome to our expert modeling one wildfire three. We're going to be uh, taking a look at some advanced rounds and what we'll do for the first exercise. Uh, just go ahead and open the speaker.prt. Uh, we can take a look at uh, what it is and uh, how it was constructed. Uh, basically has uh, a protrusion, uh, a few datum points and cuts and fairly uh, simplistic but uh, should uh, uh, give you an idea as far as uh, putting in uh, a little more advanced rounds than the, than the standard stuff. Uh, make sure your uh, datum points are on and we'll go ahead and uh, begin. Uh, what we'll want to do first is uh, we're going to basically create some around sets around the speaker here. Uh, so we'll need to select the edge first um, so select the uh, overall uh, model and then that will allow you to select that edge um, and then go ahead and select the uh, round icon. From there, um, of course you could do just a simple round and hit the green check and done, but we're actually going to be creating some, some variable rounds here. So click the uh, sets button uh, and the way that we're looking at this basically this is the first set, uh, this is the second set, that's the third set down there and that's the fourth set up there. So first, where this is actually going to be a variable round that transitions from uh, 0.5 on both ends to uh, uh, 1 uh, in the middle where those datum points are. So first thing we're going to want to do is change that value to 0.5. Um, so that's a, a constant radius across there, 0.5. What you want to do then is right click uh, in here in the radius box and add another radius. Uh, it'll automatically select uh, the references that it can can uh, create for that round um, and then it'll specify uh, 0.5 there as well. Uh, what we're going to want to do is add one more uh, radius value in here and you'll notice that it uh, actually just uh, arbitrarily places that in there. You could actually drag it around uh, if you wanted to. Uh, but we're going to actually select a reference and now that we have those datum points in there that we can select, I'll say select 0, .0 um, and then we'll update that value to 1. So now you've actually got a, a variable radius going through that starts out at 0.5, it transitions to 1, uh, then it goes back down to 0.5. So uh, relatively easy, of course, but uh, giving you an idea as far as creating a, a variable round. <clears throat> um, so you could hit green check there. We're actually going to create these all uh, in one round feature, just uh, in four sets, basically. So I'll hit uh, new set again. Um, and just select the edge that I want to uh, create that round on. Uh, let, once again, we're going to start off with a, a value of 0.5. Um, let's go ahead and right click and say add radius. So now we've got radius values uh, specified at uh, the ends there. And we'll add one more here. Uh, give it a value of 1. Um, and then uh, to select, uh, basically right now it's saying a uh, uh, it's going by a ratio of 0.2, so basically 20% of that entire edge that places that. So you can specify uh, either a, a reference, or actually a, a ratio or a reference. Uh, in this example, we're going to want a reference, um, and I can select that uh, point number one, and then place that uh, that uh, reference to our, our our second or a third value there. Uh, Next, we'll go ahead and select a uh, new set, and we're going to take that top edge. And this one, I believe we're going to want a value of 0.3. Uh, and then one more set uh, down here, a value of 0.3 as well. So that uh, takes care, basically, of all four of those edges. And uh, there's, of course, some additional manipulation as far as uh, if we want to create a little bit better transitions here. When I hit uh, the green check and say done, <coughs> you'll notice they aren't uh, necessarily the, the nicest looking transitions there, but it does give you an example of uh, utilizing multiple sets within a round as well as a, a variable round there. If, uh, if I wanted to uh, modify that, of course I could uh, by selecting uh, uh, the uh, edit definition of that round, uh, and then we could go in and edit those values. Um, last part of the exercise, I believe we just wanted to make sure and, and, and uh, create a shell out of there. So we'll go ahead and shell this out and I'm actually just going to remove the uh, inside surface there of the speakers. Uh, we'll give it a wall thickness of 0.25 and go ahead and hit the green check. 
and we should uh, be looking at kind of a hollowed out speaker there. So uh, once again, not necessarily the most complex round. And of course, I think uh, if I was going to be doing this in, you know, an actually aesthetically pleasing uh, production environment, I would do something about this uh, transition, making that look a little bit nicer. But uh, once again, just to, to give you an idea of creating uh, some a little more complex rounds than the uh, standard uh, uh, single round. So in this exercise, uh, we're actually just going to do a couple more uh, rounds that will display uh, working with uh, surfaces rather than uh, edges. So what we'll do is select the speaker stand and pull this guy up and take a look at it. Um, basically, um, talking a little bit about continuing rounds and edges. So what we're actually going to be doing is creating a around between that surface uh, and that surface. And how we do that is, is of course, just creating a, a round. But how, how it continues and how it terminates uh, is really has to do a lot with the tangent edges that are along those surfaces. So just to give an example, we'll go ahead and uh, create our first round. And the first one will be around set. And we'll create uh, uh, or select our services. We'll select that surface and then this bottom surface. Uh, and you'll notice that it uh, creates that round along any tangent edge between those surfaces. So if we wanted to create uh, the round to continue along there, these two surfaces here would need to have tangency or a round through there. Um, and we'll go ahead and create a new set and let's do it with the other side. So we'll select that surface and that surface. So once again, you'll notice uh, that the round continues up until that edge um, and then it ends. What we may want to do um, is uh, let's go ahead and just say green and check that just so you get an idea of what that looks like. Um, so we could always go through and if you did need a round going all the way through there. Uh, we could edit the definition of this and pull up our sets again um, and then also potentially create a, a new set maybe along this edge. And let me create one more along that edge. Um, in doing so, um, we could also add that third one in there. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what that looks like. Uh, so you'll notice you get a little bit better look and feel there as far as that edge when you add those additional uh, tangent edges in there. Now if we went back and edit this definition, and let's go over to our sets, and I'm just kind of winging this one just to see what this ends up looking like. Let's go ahead and, uh, actually let's cancel this, and we'll go ahead and delete this feature. We'll say OK. And I just want to see what uh, we might get here if we kind of play around with these values. Let's see, those are 0.15. Uh, so let's go ahead and add, let me add in this round. Let's say uh, 0.15. And let's go ahead and hold uh, Control down and select that other one and say good to go. So now uh, let's go ahead and try that round again. And we'll select our round. And this time we'll be doing our surfaces. Uh, and you'll notice that it picks that round up all the way across there. So a lot has to do with the how the two surfaces meet um, and that edge, if it is uh, continually tangent across there or not. Um, so we'll go ahead and say OK there and basically created that same feature. Uh, by just having those two vertical edges uh, uh, rounded or tangent as well. 